All right, so we've talked about our four-step process for data analytics, and we're looking at this question. What is the aging of our accounts receivable as of December 31st, 2018? All right, so let's go to step two. What variables do we have, and what variables do we need, and what is the logic? So let's tackle the first two parts of this. What variables do we have, and what variables do we need? Well, we have this... I'm a member of this particular not-for-profit organization, uh, the Hub of Analytics Education, which makes data sets and exercises, et cetera, available to faculty around the globe. So we're going to use a data set from here, and we've got a few different companies, and we're going to use this company called BCGG. BCGG is a liquor wholesaler to a variety of different liquor stores. They sell wine and spirits. They've got more than 75 customers in the greater New England area. And there's a lot of resources that are available. And specifically, there's data, exercises, and other support materials. We just wanted to go in and take a look at the data. And there's lots of different year ends. And we're interested in December 2018. But the first thing I want to do is, right here, is the data field definitions. This is the first thing we should always take a look at are the data field definitions. And so I'm going to blow this up a little bit so we can see it better on the screen. And so what we've got here is we've got a variety of, of uh, data sets. So we've got the beginning inventory, their customer listing, ending inventory. We've got purchases, invoice sales, sales, vendors, price file, invoice purchases. What we're interested in is really the invoice sales, right? So let's take a look at the variables that are in the invoice sales. So we've got the customer number. We've got delivery date. This is the date the sales order is delivered. The sales order number, sales order date, the quantity, dollars, freight, invoice date, payment date, and discount taken by the customer. So let's think about the variables that we need to age receivables. Well, we want to have the customer number because we want to figure out which customers owe us money. So we definitely want the customer number. The next thing we want is we probably want the dollars that they owe us and the freight that they owe us. So dollars plus freight. Well, we don't have that variable, so we're going to probably have to create a variable that adds dollars and freight together because the customer owes us both of these amounts. And then I've got to figure out, well, when do they really start owing us? Because we're trying to age something from one date until what day we are, what day, what day we're sitting at right now. So I, I, the question is, is it the invoice date that the date of the invoice was sent to the customer or is it the delivery date? When do they start owing us the money? So we have either of those dates and that's a decision. That's a choice you get to make. The other thing we've got here is payment date. So we want to make sure that any customer who's already paid us, because this is just going to be the listing of all the invoices, we really want to find the unpaid items as of December 31. So we're going to need to use this payment date as well. The one thing we don't have is we don't have a variable that splits out the how much they owe us by those four different buckets, right? The 0 to 30, 31 to 60, etc. So it looks like that the variables we have, right? Variables that we have in this case is we've got freight dollars, we've got payment date, we've got invoice date, we've got customer, and we've also got delivery date. Variables that we're going to need is well, we're going to need a new variable that adds freight and dollars together. So total amount owed is going to be a variable we need. And we're also going to need another variable that's going to give me the buckets of how long these uh, invoices, unpaid invoices, have been outstanding. So we need two new variables, and we've got a number of other variables that we already have. So then the next step is going to be, well, what is the logic that we need? How do we solve this, given the variables that we have? Because as you saw, we've got these different dates, we've got dollar amounts, etc. And now I've got to figure out what's the logic to be able to 
come up with these buckets and then use that, use the variables that we have to create this aging of accounts receivable.